Hey, hi all. Welcome back to BRR Knowledge Center. And in this session, we are going to talk about a pointer data type as we have seen value types and reference types in previous session. So as part of data types, we have three types, value types and reference types and pointer type. These are value types which basically stores integer and floating literals, floating numbers. And reference types basically using it for creating classes, strings, interfaces, arrays, kind of uh, values if you want to store we use reference types and when it comes to pointer we generally use this as an delegate right basically stores the address of value okay so the pointer in c-sharp language is a variable again it is also known as a locator or indicator that points to an address of a value so let me um, explain about pointer data type here pointer data type so pointer data type, the pointer data type in C-sharp language is a variable, okay? It is also known as locator or indicator that points to, indicator that points to and address of value. So example, I'm going to declare int star j, int star j. That means a is a pointer, which will store the address of value you are going to store into a, okay? So here we use two symbols, right? One is ampersand, okay? This is ampersand. This is basically using it for address operator. Purpose is determine the address of a variable. Other symbol we use star. That is asterisk sign. Asterisk sign or asterisk simply. This is basically using it for indirection operator or direction operator. Purpose is accessing or access the value of an address. The first one is to determine the address. The second one is accessing value from the address. Okay. So this is something pointer data type we talk about. The pointer in the C-sharp language can be declared using asterisk symbol. This is how we are going to define the pointer variable, okay? This basically we use, when I say ampersand A, it will return the address, right? When I say star A, it returns the value of the particular address, okay? So when you go back to these types, value types, right? We'll discuss in detail here in this session what is int and then what is float because these are the main data types we are going to use it as part of regular programming, right? So let me talk about integer here. So integer data types are something positive or negative whole numbers without decimal inputs or decimal finds, okay? So I'm talking about integer types, okay? So integer data types, let me clear this. Integer data types are positive or negative whole numbers without decimal points. So we use type as int, okay? The int data type can store, int data type can store whole numbers from 
as I said, the range like you know two four, two and four seven some four eight, three six four eight two, two one four seven. Something four eight three six four seven. So in into type, we prefer this data type when we create variables with numeric values. Okay, example int int emp id, right? You can say this way. So you can just print this value like console dot right line of int emp id. Okay. And similarly, we have a long data type. This long data type can store whole numbers from more than the integer range, right? The long data type can store whole numbers from the range, like you know, from the range, the range is something uh, bigger value, okay? Or we can say the long data type can store whole numbers more than integer range, more than integer range, okay? This is used when int is not large enough to store value. This is used when int data type is not large enough to store values. When you feel that value is not going to store, then I'm going to use example long, right? Some LNG number equal to some value. So this basically does not store in integer because the range is this but this this value is exceeded the range and i'll go for declaring this variable as long okay and coming to the next one is floating what is this float so as i mentioned without points without decimal points when you want to store a value you go for defining variable as integer or float if you want to store some fractional numbers then you go for float Float and double data types can store fractional values. Note that you should end the value with F for float, D for doubles. Okay. So the float and double data types are used to store fractional numbers. That means decimal points. Note that we should end the value end the value with f for float and d for double that's how we are going to recognize what is float and what is double example float uh some value right equal to 9.99f similarly double value i'm going to store as some 3.145 double okay this is how you are going to store value in float and double data type that means when you have a fractional numbers you define float or double values so what kind of data type i'm going to choose either float or double in this case so the precision of a floating bind value indicates how many digits the value can have after the decimal point so if you look at here i mentioned two and here i mentioned almost five so the precision of float is only six or seven decimal digits. Well, while double variable have a precision of about 15 digits. That means uh, more than six, seven digits. If you uh, 
have more than 15 digits, you go for decimal. That basically having 28, 29 significant digits. Okay. Therefore, I think uh, based on the uh, decimal digits you are having it, you choose the either float or double or decimal, but make sure it is safer to use double for most calculations. Okay. So, float precision is six to seven decimal digits. Double precision is fifteen digits and decimal precision is twenty eight to twenty nine digits. So make sure it is safer to use double for most calculations. Okay. Right. And next one is we have another set of data types like, you know, date time data types. And after that, we will be going to discuss about car and string data types, which comes as part of reference data types. Okay. So with this session, with, in, with these data types, we'll close the session. And in next session, we'll talk about the date time data types and string data types. Very clear. Okay. Do you want do you want to continue? Okay. Yeah, let's discuss date time then. So date time data types. So if you want to store some date time value, right? We used this date time data type. When there is a or when there is a need to work with date values. So the date time has the date and time property from date time data types. Okay. So the date time has the data and time properties from date time we can find the date and time right using properties of date time variable or type so date time contains other properties also. Date time contains other properties also like hour, minute, second, millisecond, year, month, and day. Example, if I define a variable of DT current date as date time, I must instantiate using date time because this is a class. Okay, and when I'm printing this using console write line, okay, this will print current date say just this is a current date like this you need to give this in double quotes and use dollar symbol to dynamically resolve the value of this variable so the output will get printed right uh, something like
current date. Okay. So to get the current date time, so you need to use to get the current date time. Okay. You can directly use the date time data field itself. There's no need of defining variable. That means you just copy this, paste it. In this case, date time dot now to string. This way also you can get the current date time. Okay. So the other properties we talk about this date time field are right day of week we can get the name of the day right from the week day of week and day of year we can get the day of or we can get the date day of the year we can get the day of The year we use day of year and similarly time of year and we have today and day time and now and utc right and we have ticks we have some other kind of kind property so these are different properties we have inside of day time data type so time of year means it will give you the time in a day time we use time of year that means we can we can get the time right in a day time and today we generally use it to get the right today's value the property will return the object of the date time okay now property will return the date time object okay and today property will return the object of date time and now property will return the date time okay i think this it returns Date time object. It returns. So it returns object of date time. Which is having today's value. And UTC basically using it for returning the coordinated universal time. UTC is nothing but universal coordinated date time, right? Which is uh, throughout world, it is having same value. And uh, one tick represents the 100 nanoseconds, right? So we use this UTC use for return date time of, right? Coordinated universal and that is UTC takes we using generally for converting date into you know long kind of stock so one tick represents the 100 nanoseconds in date time so date time returns the number of ticks in a date time right it returns number of ticks In a data kind means it returns where the representation of time is done by instance which is based on the local time or utc time okay returns value where it representation of time represents of time is done by the instance excuse me so these are some of the data types instead of date time 
and we'll see some session with regards to this date time next session practically how the values are printing and showcase like how the values are displaying in the console okay thanks for listening to this video and please subscribe this channel for more videos thank you